Dzień dobry from Gdańsk again. This is part two of three, how to plank fixing with full process of getting fittings on the hull, preparing the plank, uh, making the, the alignment and basically getting things ready to sail. Don't be so serious in front of the camera, they say. Yeah, I know, I'm not the most funny guy in front of the camera, but inside me I'm all smiling. You just can't see it, that's the point. But keep in mind, I have to take care of lightning, lighting, uh, voice recording, camera settings, um, shooting the right angles to present in the best possible way what I want to present. I also must not forget to press record button when I start talking to a camera, which happened a couple of times already. So these are the, the, the struggles I have now. But uh, if you want to have fun, try to pronounce Zakrzewski. And if you think you did it well, uh, try to write it down and double check how far from original you are. It took me two World Championship titles to get some people pronounce my name properly. And look how easy I made it for my, for, for my brother. But uh, the guy who is doing this in the best possible way is Steve Kowalski, who can also curse in Polish very well. So if you want some Polish lessons, very valuable Polish lessons, go to Steve and use the nearest opportunity at the Great Western Challenge in a couple of weeks from now. But uh, we have serious stuff to talk about today, so let's go, let's go to work. This is a brand new plank. I put one sticker to mark forward direction, one sticker to mark point to drill the hole, and one sticker to mark the center of a plank. Then. I hook the tape measure to one edge of the plank and mark the distance of 1222 millimeters. It may be a bit different in your case depending on the plank length, but in my case works perfect. Here I'm uh, 10 millimeters in the first approach I'm 10 millimeters uh, too short, but I will realize about this very quickly and correct my measurement. Unfortunately, with this camera angle, you can't see it, but you have to trust me. And I will do the same exercise, starting the measurement from the other end of the plank. And when two marks overlap, it means this is the center point. Of the plank. If there is a little gap, the center is in between the marks. And this is pretty easy exercise. Next, I I will mark a clear center line using my flexible square, right there. Next step, I mark a distance of eight inches which is 203 millimeters it should land close to the middle of the of the support block yeah right there and uh, I use calipers um, I use calipers to find a, um, a center of, of, of the support block I'm scribing the line. You can't see it on the on the tape, but I'm taking a simple ruler to emphasize the lines and find the point or identify the point. I punch a little hole to avoid drill from slipping. And as you can see, there's a brand new plank. There's nothing on the bottom. So before drilling, I want to make sure that the plank sits leveled and supports are leveled as well, that makes drilling operation easier. And I start drilling with 3mm drill and square may be very helpful here. This is uh, followed by 5mm, 
and 6 mm uh, drill. And before I go top down with final 8, I start with light touch from the bottom to avoid paint to splinter. Keep in mind that I make 20 mm in diameter hole in the wooden core before infusion. This means I'm drilling through the solid resin and no bushing will be needed. Then I countersink from top and bottom and next, next uh, comes painter's tape to protect support surface during the measurement. And I, I also use a light blue tape to better see the marks, the mark that is coming soon. Now cleaning both tripods from any deposits after laser cutting with angle grinder and next countersinking tri uh, tripods to accommodate screw heads. And marking a center line of my hull. My flexible precise square comes in very handy. By the way, this, uh, this thing is made in USA. I mark uh, two points within one meter and once I have them marked I use straight edge or one meter ruler to draw a center line to connect those points. And this is a pretty simple exercise. And still eyeball uh, eyeballing the line to make sure it passes through the center of the steering post. I, I also uh, used to use a laser to project a line, but nowadays eyeballing uh, with uh, my experience is sufficient to see if I'm right about finding a center line. Now positioning square to define pivot axis of steering runner and here comes a very important measurement longitudinal distance from pivot axis of steering runner to pivot axis of aft runner i measure max distance minus five millimeters for safety and 60 millimeters for middle pads since the distance between holes in the pads are 60 millimeters i want to take all the measurements from the middle pads Using this point, I draw a line that is perpendicular to the center line. And here, come, here comes the jig. Pay attention to the hole in the center. And maybe a few words about, about the jig. It has four notches and the center hole. And if I do my lines correct, I should be able to see them crossing in the center hole and the lines should be passing through the centers of each notch. If you can repeat that setting, it means you have mastered basic geometry. Just like you see on the photos. If one of the line, uh, if one of uh, uh, line lines is off, make sure that your main reference line is the hull's center line and the other, the other line is as close as possible. To the notches. Clamp the jig, put tripods uh, in and start marking references. Two holes on each tripod to draw a center, center lines. Transferring big holes is not necessary but may help. And then three, uh, three important marks on each side. And we are ready to remove the steel. Next task is to mark points for drilling 20 mm holes. Now let's zoom in to see what I need to do. I need to connect those three points with corresponding points on the other side and connect those two points to draw an axis of a tripod. This creates a three points for drilling holes. 
this way without any advanced measurements using just jig pencil and a long ruler I'm able to mark everything I need. And this is how it should look like after we are done drawing all the lines. Now punching holes to guide force a bit. I use I use also again square to guide my hand and I start drilling total of six holes. Note I'm not going all the way through. I go deep enough to let my force nerves uh, bit mark a point on the other side. The same with every single hole. Not going through the through the full uh, floor uh, thickness. I flip the hole upside down or to the normal position and use those points from the bit to drill the remaining remaining portion of the cockpit floor. This makes crisp and nice edge of every hole that I make. Next, I dry fit aluminum bushings. I check the length and make sure all fit well. This step is optional, but I want it to look just great. I apply epoxy to both wood and sleeves and press them in, press them in place. And it's time to position the jig again. You know the rules and you know how it should look like. Just do the, the alignment and clamp the jig. Now I'm pre-cutting connectors from the side facing the hull. I go in no more than two-thirds of the material thickness. Not going all the way through. This is, this is how it should look like. Then I install the pads in place and use self-centering drill bit to mark the center of each hole. Like that. And I dry fit the pad with uh, 4 by 16 millimeters wood screws and I quickly realized that I need a bigger screws. So therefore I changed to 4, four and a half by 18 millimeters wood screws. I install them with uh, a little help of epoxy left after gluing aluminum sleeves. important is that I use drill to put the screws in but not all the way in I go like 90% and every single screw is tightened with hand for better control epoxy seals the hole but also makes makes a stronger uh, stronger connection And tighten, clean, clean excess resin and move on to the next step. Time to remove clamps and jig and now I remove the remaining connectors. Pre-cutting before, pre before makes it easy now and reduces the risks of cutting into hull. And after that that parts are separated from each other.
cleaning and the next step. I, I remove uh, a spring from the post. And uh, I install a thin, uh, thin looped cord around the post. And I will hook my tape measure to this loop. Yeah, just like that. And I will be measuring the distance to the chocks, to the left and right chalk. Coming later on. It moves freely and always finds the same center line. Now time to install my plank. I'm using 8mm screw to connect hull to plank. Of course, screw goes from inside of the cockpit and then the washer and the nut from the bottom of the plank. In this case, from the top. I leave it uh, a little tight. I transfer pivot axis to the bottom of the chalk, as you see on the picture now. And I will measure right to this corner when two lines meet. I hook a tape measure to the looped cord and apply even tension to measure the distance to both chocks and always to outside of the tape. And here is uh, a zoom or different angle from, from, a, from a camera. You can see that I measure right to the corner to where the two lines meet. And this is pretty precise measurement because the, the error, error margin is plus minus one, one millimeter. Sometimes it takes several measurements to find a sweet spot. By the way, do you remember me saying I don't need glasses? Not true anymore, I just made another step to become a Muppet. Yeah, and uh, once you are happy with your measurements, you have to go under the hull and use the marker or pencil to transfer um, an oval from the middle path to the plank. This is why I put this uh, light blue paint painter's tape in the beginning on the plank. And this is uh, how it should look like. You find the center and drill another 8mm hole. Basically we are done with our installation, so you can take your gears out on the ice and enjoy sailing. In order to make full use of this system, it is also very important to have a spare set of pads. Spare set means not the full tri uh, 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 tripod, but two pads on each side. This is what I am just now preparing for myself. I will have a center pad and a side pad. They are symmetrical, so it doesn't matter, uh, doesn't matter which side. And uh, that will allow me to replace the pad in case of emergency situation and in, in case I rip one or two pads um, during an accident and I don't have a spare one, then I will be limited to move my plank uh, fore or aft only. But if I would like to use the same, exactly the same setup and the same position of the plank, most likely I will be forced to replace the pad. And for replacing pad, you need a spare pad because probably this will bend and will not be good for use again anymore. Therefore, if you go to cut your set or of, of, of tripods, cut two sets and then prepare a separate pads. So you have to cut them, cut them and separate from each other. And what you have to do is to countersink them. Here is what I'm gonna do. As you noticed, I, for installation of, my, of each of the pad, I use this corner, corner holes. This means that in case of accident, when my pad is ripped off, there might be four small damaged holes left after the 
screws are gone. Therefore, these pads are equipped in total with eight holes each. And these four holes are uh, creating alternative set of uh, fixing holes, meaning that when I prepare my spare pad and I would like to install my spare pad, I have to countersink the other set of holes, meaning this, these four holes has to be countersunk instead of the corner holes. That will allow me uh, easy replacement and I don't have to worry about the holes left after the screws are gone. So that's my recommendation. If you are preparing a spare set, you countersink um, the center, uh, center holes as set B of the holes and yeah, basically that's it. No big philosophy in here. Ah, one important thing that is that when I install a pad, then I take a three or four millimeter a drill and I drill just mark a center of a hole. Most likely this, this is four, mil, four mils, so I would, I would take a four mil uh, drill uh, and I would just touch uh, touch a surface of a paint to mark the place where my uh, where my uh, screw is supposed to go in from this uh, alternative set of uh, holes. So installing is no more guessing because I will already have pre-marked um, uh, points where my screws go in. And one tip, I always keep my spare set of pads together with mounting screws and a screwdriver in a plastic bag, little plastic bag, for all sorts of emergency situations. So if there is a real need to replace the pad on the ice, on the go, if I'm able to get it from the bag, that's easy, but if somebody is going to do it for me, then it's enough to say, take a plastic bag with you and bring it to to where I am uh, in need and I have everything in there. So I open the plastic bag and I have screws, screwdriver, spare parts and that's it. And this is all I need for uh, quick maintenance, quick repair. That's a good, good thing to have because it usually happens when you don't have comfortable situation and enough time for fixing. It's always in a hurry, always in a rush and having this prepared as a kit, that's a perfect solution. Think about it. And that concludes episode number two. You are ready to go out and sail, sail safety. Um, with the next episode, we will focus on a very important thing, which is uh, runner plank shimming. I'm pretty sure that many of you um, never thought about what could be a possible impact or influence of not well uh, shimmed plank. And uh, this has a huge impact on runner alignment and end performance, especially in the light, light breeze, light wind. And that will be the topic for our uh, third episode of uh, how to plank fixing. I should be able to shoot it in the next three weeks. So stay tuned and you are already good to to go to the laser jet cut shop go to the link in the description visit website download the files before you do that read a description and enjoy your new project think ice if you want to have more fun with polish gang join us at the sailing event at the bar in the evening sometimes it happens that we offer a special trainings and courses like the one in 2013 on Lake Pepin when Robert was training uh, US sailors on how to sharpen runners. If you haven't seen the video, you will find the link in the description. Think guys.